Greetings, Ranger Geeks and Morphin Freaks. Welcome to the Morphin Mania Podcast. It's time to recap and review another three episodes of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Season 1. With us, the fabulous freebirds of Spandex and Robot Fights. <laughs> he... <laughs> That's he has some toast. It's buttery. It's humanoid. Oh, I love bridge. <laughs> Hi, I'm humanoid. I'm Scottish. And the doy. And it's me, Mighty Morphin Richard O'Brien. Richard O'Brien is a riffraff from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oh, oh the creator of... Uh, the creator Rock of Rocky Horror. The only yes. thing I know... I haven't seen that movie yet. The only thing I know about is the dentist song with Steve Martin. The dentist song is from Little but, Shop of oh, Horrors. Oh, god it's damn it. Never mind. Wait, I have seen Rocky <laughs> Horror. That's... The, that's Tim Curry, isn't it? That yeah. is Tim Curry. Okay. The, that's Tim Curry the transvestite. I have seen that. Okay. Yeah, I'm a big transvestite. What did he say? Oh. My favorite role Tim Curry has ever done. My favorite role from my favorite actor. <laughs> Wait, did you say big transvestite? Uh, I'm it's just, sweet trans I'm just a big sweet transvestite. <laughs> now I'm just, a, now I'm just imagining Tim role. Curry as like a giant golden homer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big transvestite, Lenny. <laughs> Starting tomorrow, I'm going to punch Lenny in the back of the head. <laughs> what did I do, Homer? Not Lenny. No. Lenny. Oh, my God. And then the front of his house falls over, and he's just sitting there eating dinner. <laughs> Please don't tell anyone how I live. <laughs> All right, oh. let's get back to the silly robot show in, with spandex. Oh, my yes. God. All it's right. not spandex. It's not All right, so what are the three episodes we're recovering today? <laughs> we're, wait, wait, covering or recovering from? Depends on the episode. I'll, I'm definitely still recovering from that second one. Oh, yeah. oh God. We'll get there. If any of you have been following along with uh, the order of what episodes we're covering, I think you know what episodes are coming up in this bunch. More to see later. I might as well uh, bring up that we're covering season one, episode three. 36 birds of a feather the air date for birds of a feather was february 8th 1993 uh it was the 52nd episode of uh, batman the animated series and it features <laughs> you son of a bitch beautiful i'm so for this actually <laughs> it is about the recovery and uh, reformation of the penguin such a good episode yeah birds no joke feather that was actually a pretty good episode birds of a feather is probably one of the best uh batman the animated series episodes just like to sidebar real quick i'd probably like put it there. right up next to the two phase two parter and as like my favorite episodes and almost right near my favorite episode of batman the animated series if you're so smart why aren't you rich where where does almost got him rank on your list shit I forgot about that <laughs> you dumbass Dude, we only on... referenced that clip of killer croc every episode it was a big rock i know but that's all i can think of with that when i think of that episode even though that episode is gold it truly is a, a tour de force of children's animation for batman oh my goodness great Grey Ghost as well. Grey, Grey Ghost, Ghost a baby great. doll, also baby good. Doll. A lot of sleeper hits. To quickly plug Walter Bernaziak's Batman, really, I, I recommend you check out uh, the whole Batman series he's doing because he's wrapping it up for the epilogue. English, sorry. He's doing an epilogue for his uh, Batman, which is he's covering the movie. Oh, let's go. So like the, um, the Red Hood movie and whatnot. Oh, no, I mean uh, specifically the Batman, the animated series tie-in movie. So it oh, would be... What did he say? Oh. I mean, what the uh, hell? <laughs> That's Menace. 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 Yes, the, the ultimate, the, 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 ul the ultimate Batman the animated series tie-in, the Phantom Menace. My bad, Mask of the Phantasm. Mask of the Phantasm. We are not editing that out. That was too perfect. <laughs> that was too good. <laughs> It was Mask of the Phantasm, Sub Zero, and Mystery of the Bat Women. Why does Mystery of the Bat Women sound like something that Cinema Snob would cover? It w he would too. He would. All right, Birds of a Feather was uh, released November twenty second, nineteen ninety three, and was written by Julian Clem and directed by Robert Hughes. Oh my God! It's Robert someone Hughes. that isn't Terrence H. Winkless. <laughs> 
So we open at the youth center and we get Zach. I at first noted here that Zach took over uh, Tommy's karate class since he fucked off. Yeah, he had to, he had to go. <laughs> Planet needs him. It's like he's at school, but no one talks to him because he he's ostracized from the group. It's because of his accent, I'm telling you. Then why the hell haven't they gotten rid of Jason yet? Uh, because I my voice is too good. Oh, yeah. wait, sorry, I forgot that's you doing it, not him. <laughs> uh, you're welcome. So maybe we should just fire you instead. <laughs> uh, you can't fired. fire me. I write the intro. Zach is teaching the, the class. Uh, he, he's teaching the class, and uh, he calls out specifically this one kid, Cameron. Who was that kid that was helping, like, Jason uh, a couple episodes back? Oh, God. oh uh, that was his cousin. Uh, hold on, Jeremy, I have it in my notes. Jeremy, Jeremy. yeah, yeah, Jeremy. Jeremy, yeah. Cameron is just as good as an actor as he is, but a little bit better. I will give him credit. Although I will I will give Cameron some credit. They didn't have to dub in his voice. Very oh my true. god, yeah, I forgot about that. But uh, Cameron's facial expressions. Seeing it right now. Yeah. We'll get to it. Something I had, no I had uh, noted here as well was um, Zach tells him to do the Akata Zakata. Cameron! I'd like you to go through the new kata for us. Uh, which is basically the uh, equivalent of like putting on like a martial arts dance, almost like combining all the moves and whatnot. This is where I put a note on that. If you guys remember this karate DVD I used to watch as a kid. Oh, oh, oh no, karate masters again. <laughs> yes. Not the return of <laughs> he actually found the footage. Get ready, it's Tommy Nitro. Huh? To the moves in the dome. Joe. Actually found the footage. Karate Masters, and it was the Crimson Sausage is the main villain. Got the Crimson Man. And his sidekicks, oh, Boogers uh. and Zip It. Boogers and Dweeb, and Zip It's brain is jelly. Well, hold on. You say <laughs> the Crimson, crimson sausage. sausage. The Crimson Sausage. The crimson. And the, only reason... the Crimson Sausage. The um... only reason it's called the Crimson Sausage is because it's a giant red dummy. I... The only that reason like I remember... It's three dudes who dress like a freaking punching bag that comes yeah. with the DVD. I need to yeah. drink. <laughs> Don't worry. Malcolm's going to force you to watch all 30 minutes for editing this episode. Uh, uh, uh... <laughs> Oh, hell no! You're welcome! He already made me watch all 30 minutes, and honestly, it's not as bad as I thought. Okay. Wait, you watched all 30 minutes? Yes. My god, I didn't even want you to do that. I just wanted you to watch the Crimson... You're a psychopath! Well, yeah, I mean... It's nah, you're friends with me. It comes with the territory. The only reason I, I did have note here as well, because when I was a kid, I used to think Bulk was the Crimson Sausage. Yeah, to be fair, they look very similar. <laughs> It's all in the face, except for some reason, Bulk is a more credible bully. Yep. I mean, the Crimson Sausage is just an idiot. At, at least Bulk has a sidekick named Biff. So why don't you make like a tree and get out of here? Who we see show up, a my protege Biff, and challenge Hammerin that he's going to be facing him in the tournament tomorrow. My question for Biff. Whoa, Biff. What's that? Where are your parents? Yeah. Also, <laughs> well, like, where's your sports almanac? You see this book. Now why don't you make like a tree and get out of here? It's leave, you idiot. Yeah, well, yes, the Back to the Future reference is very obvious. But uh, Biff looks like, if you know, in Fairly Odd Parents, you know, his friend Chester McBadbat. Oh, my God. It'd be like if Chester McBadbat was in live action. <laughs> Except it was also Italian because he's got like the slick back hair <laughs> and the mullet. The mullet's a seller of the 90s. So I, I have three theories about who Biff is. One, he's Biff's, uh, Biff's, Bulk's brother. Two, he's Bulk's clone. Three, he was a former almost victim of skulls. Skull killed his parents and was about to kill Biff, but then Bulk was like, no, he has potential. We're his parents now. <laughs> yes. I'm expecting a missing poster somewhere to show up for with Biff's picture on it. Have you seen this boy? It's gonna be like Derry from It, yeah. just with a bunch of missing kids posters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they're all for Biff. Actually, I was thinking of all of Skull's victims, and, and the one like at the very back, all with their way, of course. Poor oh, old Willie. Sorry, I just noticed that Biff is also wearing a jacket with the letter B on it. Yeah. Is it a lowercase B? Maybe. Oh, fuck. That would have been actually ingenious for them to do. That would have been crazy. Like, an uppercase B for 
bulk and a lowercase b for Biff. If they would have done that, he probably wouldn't have been a one-off character. Is he a one-off character? Yeah, we never see Biff again. I act- I'm, I'm looking it up. Hold on. As you're doing that, uh, we cut to Rita at Bandora Castle. Once again, telling how much she hates the Power Rangers. Oh, this is a dumb plan of hers. Uh, Rita basically, like, it's just saying how she's going to destroy the Power Rangers. And I had here that she wants to crush them like eggs, but I rewatched the episode and it turns out she said ants. They'll be crushed like ants. Oh, oh that's so ants. sad. Oh. Well, she said she's going to bring down the hatch of sores down there it's been a while since i've had a rant oh i'll get to it once we get to hatch of sores but then after uh, a brief cutaway to uh zach and cameron talking about you don't need to be worried man it's all good this is going to be a great competition just stay relaxed and everything will be all right it's basic talk and then, of course, Zach immediately has to dip after they realize that they have to go to the uh, command center. Yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. And Cameron's just disappointed. It's like, man. So no. he's not disappointed. He's dead inside by the look on his face. It's like <laughs> his dad went to the corner store to get milk and never came back. Okay, I have the info on Biff, by the way. So Biff, yes, this is his only episode. He's portrayed by someone named Farron Tops- Farron Thompson. Farron? He, uh... Okay. Farron. F-A-R-R-A-N-D. And he only has two more credits besides this episode. Okay. One, he was a extra called a bratty kid in twin sitters twin sitters from 94 and apparently for 44 episodes he played young ryan in vr troopers things aren't always what they appear are they oh he <laughs> was young ryan oh shit okay all right your, your brain just awoke and you're like oh my god okay no wonder you look kind of familiar he was young ryan so this must have been his tryout for that oh my god was he a better actor here than his dead inside <laughs> face here no. <laughs> At least you're I appreciate the instant re- 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 response. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the command center. <laughs> so uh, we get them beaming into the command center, and we get this stupid fucking scene of what was the creature's name again? The Hatchosaurus. And, uh... The Hatchosaurus, and the only way to defeat it is with its internal computer. Cardiatron? Yes, Cardiatron. The car- yes, the, the, as Zordon calls it, the... By an ultra-intelligent internal computer called Cardiatron. It's a heart. It's a freaking heart. Yeah. Yes, it's a heart. It's a robot heart. It's- but it took me a second, like, on the second reviewing to be like, Cardiatron, oh, Cardiac, oh, that's yes. stupid. Cardiatron, Cardiac Arrest, Cardiac. Cardio. Cardio. Yeah, it's- yeah that, that, that's the whole thing. <laughs> it's it's so stupid. Stupid. I, and he said you gotta disconnect I, oh, it from within. Okay, so I guess it's not a full-on rant. It's more just me being annoyed. But man, do I like it, it! Both annoys me and um humors me, amuses me that uh the what they do with the, the monsters from Super Sentai to Power Rangers. By the way, in in case anyone is curious, Hatchosaurus is voiced by Kirk Thornton. Kirk Thornton, who has done who has done a lot of voice work in anime and video games, he is probably most well known for being uh, the voice of Orbot in the Sonic the Hedgehog series. Sonic and his friends infiltrated the lair. Okay, so in like Sonic Colors is the game this started happening. Eggman had two robots that were with him, and they were Cubot, which was the red cube, and Orbot, which was a yellow sphere. Also, the modern voice of Shadow. Sorry, I'm talking about which Sonic version, like the one with Leo White? That's no good. No, 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 the video games. Oh, the video game. I'm sorry, I misheard you. Sorry. Leo White was like 20 years before this. Oh, okay. I, I thought you were talking about the comics. <laughs> the fucking Archie comics. <laughs> yes, they have voice acting. <laughs> they have the best voice actors, especially with Peter Cullen as Dr. Robot. Uh, Tell me but... you don't want to see Optimus Prime and just play a complete dickhead. <laughs> yeah, but besides that, uh, Kirk Thornton just has a lot of uh, voice acting and anime and video games. Oh, there is one thing you might know him from, Malcolm. You played uh, Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise right yes yes i did uh he played a character named toki in that tolkien or token no, t-o-k-i oh toki is it toki or tolki or, or or is it revealed that it was tolki the whole time and it that it retroactively the went back and changed yes. it i'm i'm glad we got that in there then please call 1-800 i am a giant piece of shit beautiful clip so then do morphing sequence and we immediately cut to zord sequence 
<laughs> this is the earliest Zord sequence we have ever seen. Pretty much, like, cut to it immediately, like, or no, actually, we get the monster coming out of the ground. I gotta say, it's been a while since, like, we've had a design for the Monster of the Week that's really stuck out for me, but I really like this design. It's like a big turkey, <laughs> like a naked bird or something. It kind of reminds me of, like, an, a ground dragon, almost, like, like a dragon that was like asleep and legit has like a mountain on his back. It's like one of those turtles, you know, like those island turtles that have like a whole island on their back. That, oh, yeah. is that real? Not in life, but like it was in Aladdin and the King of not. Thieves. Yeah, Aladdin and the King of Thieves had it. Yeah, a big giant turtle with an island on its back. Genie sailed out of its mouth like Steamboat Willie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like that might be the most obscure reference we've made in this podcast. I was actually Not also going to say, because I have it in my notes. Peter Lorre is kind of mainstream, <laughs> but I, I have it in my notes that Hatchasaurus kind of looks like a Chia pet. It's a Chia. Ba -ba -ba bullshit. He does look like a Chia pet because of his hairy green back. I always judge people who own those things. It's I like, were you so what? bored with your life that you got a toy, which is literally just watching grass grow? You could just buy paint and then paint your house and watch or, it dry and you'd get the same effect. Or better yet, you could just buy the other dumbest toy on the planet, Pet Rock. I had a Pet Rock once. I didn't buy it. Or, I found it on the beach and kept it and then I, I threw one, it away later on in life. You killed your Pet Rock? That's yes. ruthless. <laughs> yeah. I legit got uh, Charlie Brown one year for Halloween. Oh, you got a rock? I got a rock. Kids, this is what happens when you don't or when you don't stop trick or treating after 17. <laughs> buy a pet rock. Or if you're in the Phineas and Ferb universe, you could just buy brick, 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 brick. It's fun. Are you having a, a, a stroke there? What? <laughs> no, no, no. In Phineas and Ferb, there was a toy commercial for brick. It's fun. Oh, OK. All right. I seriously thought you were having a stroke because you couldn't say break. Um, <laughs> so Adam died during the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I was about to call 911. He's like, bro. And, as, and while he was croaking, the Megazord, uh, or sorry, the T-Rex Zord blasts its uh, laser beam at Cardiotron in a quote unquote destroying it. Zordon then realizes that he needs to bring the team back and tell them the plan and whatnot. Yeah, th this whole thing kind of confused me because it's like, oh, let's bring you back to the command center so I can tell you that you need to destroy the Cardiotron again instead of you being able to just jump out of your Zords, find the fucking giant computer, and then blow it, the he blow it to Kingdom Come. Didn't you tell him the first time you got to destroy the computer and they didn't? They just destroyed... And then, and then he brought them back just to neg them about it. <laughs> yeah. Like, good job destroying uh, Hatchasaurus, but you haven't destroyed Cardiotron. We were about to until like, you yeah. more until you teleported us back here. Stupid! You're so stupid! I feel like at this point they're really starting to back themselves into a corner with uh, the footage. Well, after uh, bad reflection on you, we have two episodes left before we're done with the G one footage. Oh, and yeah. then we got Doomsday. Yeah. Yeah, this is the last block of just G one footage. And then after Doomsday, we get G two. So. We're just let you know, yeah, we're almost done with the G1 footage. Yeah, they're really struggling to get this stuff together <laughs> with such little footage. But at least we still get amazing shots like uh, the one we get here of Bandora shooting a freaking spell laser out of her mouth. Before that, when we cut back to the Bandora castle, Scorpina's there randomly, not doing anything. Yeah. She's just here doing nothing. You also skipped a little fun visual that I thought was really cool. Uh, they cut to the, they observe the viewing globe and they see the uh, Hatchasaurus slowly in a reverse the footage that is the best reverse the footage in this history so far. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the guts oh, just all converge on the Cardiotron and it just rebuilds itself. And I'm like, that's fucking awesome. That's like a Hellraiser scene but yeah. for kids. Now, Kids. if only we got more of that in the actual Power Rangers show. Rita shoots a spell that binds the dragon sword. Makes him weak in the and knees. Now, I did also put here how she could do this, but I did also want to mention that maybe she can have some power over the Megazord, or specifically the dragon sword, 
to some degree because of her power over the Green Ranger. I like okay. Th- this is my rant. <laughs> oh, let me let's go. Let me let, let me explain to you why this pisses me off. Rita gave the Green Ranger the power over the Dragon Zord. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And because of that, Tommy at the time had the power of the Dragon Zord. When he switched to good, he still had the power of the Dragon Zord. Yes. Then Green Candle happened, and at the end of Green Candle, Tommy's Green Ranger powers as a nebulous whole got transferred to Jason. In fact, in this episode, Jason uses the Dragon Dagger to summon the Dragon Sword, as if it's proof <laughs> that the Dragon Sword power has been transferred over to Jason. Yep. So how the fuck does Rita still have power over the fucking Dragon Sword? I don't know! Now, I will say specifically with Green Candle, they did say that the powers uh, wouldn't be, like, destroyed once the Green green, green Candle, once the Green Candle goes out. It's specifically Jason will return evil, but the only way to prevent that was by passing the powers to another ranger. Jason will return evil. Even then, you think those powers would corrupt Jason. But, like, they were good powers at that point. He switched the powers over to Jason. He's gotten Tommy's Green Ranger power, and it didn't get transferred back to Rita when the Green Candle ran out, like it was supposed to. Well, no, so because if it would have stayed with Tommy, then it would have been transferred over. They prevented it, that uh, by giving it to Jason. Exactly. That's a, thank you. Uh, but the point being, they're with Jason now. How does Rita have the ability... <laughs> To fucking weaken the Megazord, the Dragon well, Sword. Well, yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. That maybe she can't regain complete control, but she has like built in loopholes or whatever that she could still exploit. So she's Jigsaw. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. I'm still pissed. I'm, I'm still pissed about it. So let's just end this right, right with I'm pissed now. Door's locked too. Yeah, the doors. I forgot about the doors locked too. That's my favorite part of that rant. <laughs> Uh, so the dragon is now weak in the knees because Rita somehow makes him weak. He's walking. He's walking like he's. It's gotta have a really fat shit. Yeah. She uh, she whispers sweet lovelies into his ear. Hey, <laughs> let me whisper in your ear. Let me tell you something that you might like to hear. He just she just whispers in the dragon's door's ear. Hey, if you listen to me, you'll get to kill Dave. <laughs> or it's very real today. And that makes the fucking dragon sword weak in the knees. <laughs> makes his No, you know what I'm not saying that. <laughs> oh my goodness. So then we get the second uh Zord fight of the episode where we we, we get the, specifically the full mega zord now. It's basically a, another regular old fight i i will say um i i do like oh what was it there was a specific thing the um an angle or something i i had a note here <laughs> i just put megazord's a bottom i am pepe le pew your lover megazord's a bottom <laughs> what megazord's a bottom because the, the bottom in one angle yeah another really funny shot of uh of the dragon zord slowly walking towards the megazord as jason's desperately trying to call it and the dragon zord looks almost as pissed as i am when i can't get to my point just like <laughs> for fuck's sakes i am moving as fast as i bloody fucking can i hear the horn shut the fuck up again i can fucking hear you the dragon sword's so pissed off now that fucking tommy's gone because he was in a fucking toxic relationship because all tommy did while he was with him was neg him or dragon sword you have to deal with dave then this so then we get the finale of the second fight which uh, uh, of course brings on the mcguffin sorry power sword yep and Is they because really kill... they actually use it all the time i wouldn't call it a mcguffin it's honestly like there's sex machina they... no, like a mcguffin is something you go like try to collect like uh tommy like the green mm-hmm. candle was a mcguffin oh right okay then it would be a deus ex machina which is just yes it, it would be an that comes out of bloody nowhere to save the day i was gonna say occam's razor yeah. but i'm pretty sure it's not occam's razor 
And then Jason I used this Real joke already put here. It's Jason's turn to enter Jean Jacket from Nope. <laughs> oh, God. That screwed up. I love it. Oh, my fucking Christ. And then Jason fights Cardiotron, the Cardiotron. obviously robot heart. With the voice. Sorry, the obviously computer cpu it's like an ai it's like imagine your pacemaker being run by chat gpt but before he fights the computer his heartbeat is sponsored by raid shadow legends slice the, the uh catasaurus he dies and comes back to life again and what? he gets just pointier yeah he gets horns he gets now horns. and then jason goes horny oh, and horny little sea devil terry and jason goes like hey i'm gonna go in that thing hold my beer hold my beer he's like yeah i got to get in that thing I'll to get in there and then he decides to keep fucking negging the dragons or to try and awake him and just constantly play the bloody flute. i fucking hear you and i fucking stutter all the whole time he's inside there cardiotron is still like fucking shit to him because yeah the, the heart has a voice and by the way the heart voiced by uh richard cancino <laughs> since we didn't get a chance to really go over his career earlier yeah, like most of these guys he, he's done a lot of video game and anime work specifically a lot of work on the big anime like naruto he's been a big naruto guy he's been in Yu-Gi-Oh. he's been in bleach <clears throat> sorry he's been in bleach but <laughs> you sounded really depressed when you said bleach <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I didn't watch bleach uh, don't but reach for it just watch it. There's a few things that I wanted to bring up that he's from. For Malcolm, he was in an episode of Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide as a character named Mr. Fortune. I tried to look him up when you mentioned that, and I could not find him, so I just watched the Cowboy Cookie clip again. That's understandable. It's a it's a good clip. Cowboy Cookie, yippee yippee, huh? But he's done a lot of work in uh, Power Rangers. So he was in Wild Force, where he played uh, Jindrak. Not bad for a crusty old grandma. Huh? Who said that? Oh, he was Jindrax? Oh, oh, nice. He was Jindrax, yes. Uh, in Time Force, he was a character. He was Iron Spike. Well, stop when you're destroyed. I don't know who that is. Okay. That's right. fair. In Lightspeed Rescue, he was the cleverly named Cobra Monster. Now match for me. And probably the most consistent role he has besides the other one I'm going to bring up after this. Uh, in Lost Galaxy, for 13 episodes, he played Kegler. What has she done to you? <laughs> Shut the fuck up! Up. Uh, fuck Kegler. Fuck you, Kegler. Oh, and in Mighty Morphin, because uh, I feel like we should bring up what he's done in Mighty Morphin. Oh, he was in he was in Turbo as well. Sorry, uh, he played Clockstar. And in Mighty Morphin, he has played the following monsters. He's played King Sphinx, I Guy, Ooh. Weave Worm from A Star Is Born, which is the the cotton candy weaving worm. Obviously, Cardiotron. In a few, in about ten episodes, he'll be playing the jellyfish. And in season two, he does come back as I Guy for the wedding three-parter oh right i i don't i, I want to save my opinion for that when we get to it in like two years <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll see yeah. it'll probably be quicker than that let's... anyway sorry for breaking it up but i felt like oh, richard oh. cancino deserted a career breakdown but speaking of richard cancino as uh cardiotron who's a big giant heart well he was grabbing jason with all his tentacles all i was thinking like this is the weirdest boko no piku i ever seen <laughs> Oh I'm not, I'm not, that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to show a clip Don't of that. Don't Google Boku no Pico. I'm not going to put a clip of that because you know why. <laughs> no, okay. Stop it. Get some help. Get some help. <laughs> just cue full right to censor, just like blaring siren with cool Warning. Bass. Warning. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it. Don't. Don't. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh my goodness. So, so so then Jason manages to get Cardiotron out of the monster and then slays it with the power Wait, of Christmas. You skipped something. Boy, if you don't get oh my the God. power of turbo. I'm going Christmas. to kill you. No, you really skipped something. Like while he was okay, being he, when he was being tangled in the hentai porn, he called upon his uh red battleizer. I mean shield from Tommy. Right. Um yes. And we had a whole debate on whether or not this is the first battleizer. I say yeah by or no no no. I say no because it was part of like the six ranger thing and like or goddamn now I'm thinking yes. Okay, be... I, I'm gonna opt out from this debate. 
It doesn't have to be the sixth ranger. It could be any ranger because in the future episodes, other well, rangers got No, no, I'm talking well. about it was originally a sixth ranger oh, thing and right. then it became a yeah. battleizer for the red ranger because the red yeah. battleizer is a tradition of power rangers that starts on, I want to say, in space. Mega. In space, yeah, yes. Um, in space. M E G A, mega. Mm. This is just a shield. So we, yeah. yeah, it's like a shield or a weapon at first, and then like the third setting of the battleizer is what gives Andros his armor. Added armor is what we're talking about. Right? Added armor. So, and, and or it's not just. And we'll get to that when we get to that. But the shield is. Uh, I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna yeah. say no. I'm saying it's a shield as well. Mm-hmm. As as someone that is new to the series in its power rate in its American context, uh, I'm also going to say no. It feels like it's more of a transfer of power than like a brand new thing that is like attached to the suit. Plus, mm-hmm. plus I did bring this up when uh, in Gung Ho when Tommy transferred his shield to. Jason. I did forget about that. Yeah, right. it, wasn't battle, it wasn't a battleizer there either. Yeah. I forgot about that too. Okay, thanks, man. So then after he slays him with the power of Christmas, they are ready to finally uh, slay the monster once and for all. I, I cannot remember his name for the life of me. And then... Uh, they, no, 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 no. The monster, not the heart. Atchosaurus. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, they... They finally defeat Hatchosaurus with the world's dumbest Ultra Zord, and then cut yep. back to the. Uh, I want to say actually, we again, I have a headache. Nope. 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 Not this episode. Not, not well. this one. Okay. Uh, cut back to the youth center where uh, we find out Cameron gets into uh, the finals of the karate tournament where he has to fight Biff. What are you looking at, butthead? <laughs> Who somehow made it to the finals? <laughs> yeah, there was. Yeah, how? How? Wait a minute. Yeah, how? Were the other kids just that incompetent? <laughs> no, Skull killed them all. <laughs> Fair enough. And then, of course, a quick resolution to uh, Cameron being upset at Zach. Of course, it lasts like five seconds. And then uh, cut to the final fight where, you know what? These are some pretty impressive, like, 12-year-olds kicking each other. Yeah, they do a pretty decent job, honestly. And then, of course, Cameron, I have note here, uh, switches to the bad side and joins Cobra Kai and sweeps the leg. We did it! We did it! All right! Zach goes like, use the secret move I taught you, and it's just to sweep the leg. Wait, is hip-hop keto just Cobra Kai? No. <laughs> that, that's no, the no, can- no. Wait, wait, so not only is Batman canon, Karate Kid is now canon. Stop it. Get some help. So then the round ends and uh, Cameron succeeds and uh, actually has like a nice little uh, moment with Biff where he says, hey, you know what? Yeah, it was a nice match. Yeah, who match, man? And then Biff the, just the straight thing. out just uh, abandoned Falcon Skull. But you mean this one? <laughs> And now he becomes another one of his friends. You forgot yeah. the random victim, though. Skull just gets his random kid, like, grabs his one kid, goes, yeah! What I have about this ending scene, Cameron's last name is revealed. He's Cameron Hayes, which in my head canon, he was almost killed by Skull as well. But he escaped and ended up becoming a NXT champion and is now on the main roster as him. Carmelo Hayes. He escaped by changing his first name only because Skull's <laughs> that dumb. One more victim we have here. In the 18 minute and 40 second mark, like they do a wide shot of the entire audience. And when I'm looking at these kids in their uniforms, I just noticed this one little kid. And I swear to God, he was a little person when I first saw him. <laughs> uh, to me, he looked like a little surfer sting or a tiny Elvis. Quagmire, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> like we had names for him, like surfer, little surfer sting, little tiny Elvis, little Dolph Lundgren. Jesus. <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah. But he's... Well, you're not wrong, but you're not right either. And he's Saul's next victim because we never see him again. Exactly. That was a weak. Let's do it again. Jesus. Oh my. You really got to coordinate this shit better. Anyway, can we just skip this next episode, please? No, because what number is it, Malcolm? No. It's season one, episode number 37. 37. My girlfriend sucked 37 dicks in a row. 37! Hey, try not to suck any dick on the way through the parking lot. Hey, hey, you, get back here! Uh, 
clerks go. Put like every clip in. Fuck. The clerk fan base will kill me if I don't say it. Yes, all two of them. Cleanup club. Hey. <laughs> I'm kidding. You know those two are You're here right. in the sorry. podcast with you, right? You're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> 200 <laughs> well no you had to write two except those two were in the podcast with you oh true 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 <laughs> season one episode 37 37 cleanup club Clean. cleanup club the air date was november 23rd 1993 thankfully this was not one of the episodes that was put in for the reversion thank god <laughs> because <laughs> that name already gives me a massive feeling of foreboding andreas your fix has been luckily filled this episode because it was written by Mark Hoffmeyer and directed by Terrence H. Winkless. It's my boy, Terrence H. Winkless. Uh, I can't hate Terrence H. Winkless, but at the same time, I could hate him for this episode. <laughs> well, no, you blame Mark Hoffmeyer because he wrote it. Terrence H. Winkless tried to direct it the best as he could to fix it. No, you're right, actually. Terrence did have, like, a couple good things. So, yeah, fuck you, Mark Hoffmeyer. I'm kidding. <laughs> yes, how dare you spend fucking weeks on end writing a script, probably avoiding your family for a stupid kids' TV show. Boo! <laughs> Boo this man! So, the start of Clean Up Club, the episode... This is, like, one of the first episodes, I believe, where they do the entire of pretentious... Oh, the environment. We must save it. Save the world. Recycle. To be fair, they did, they did an episode that was kind of about the environment earlier. The the one with the statue. There's like, like a lot of other episodes that do this where they just ham it in. Like it was 90s yeah. cheese. Every that. show in the 90s did this. The, Power the recycling didn't save the earth episode. Almost every show did it better than this. I'm just saying, because when Power Rangers did it, it's like, God, shut up, we get it. Like, I was out. never a fan of save the environment messages in cartoons and in kids shows, because they were way too ham-fisted of it, about it. Except for Avatar, because that was somewhat subtle. It's a little bit subtle, yeah. Also, mm -hmm. like, other episodes in different seasons are going to be like this too, but be prepared for Megaforce when the entire season is the entire environment story. Uh, uh, isn't wild force like that as well Wild Force, certain episodes when it comes to uh what's his name animus when he comes along but before that it's all good <laughs> god about that whiny douche <laughs> 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 oh, so, i don't remember uh, a lot about wild force but i remember that asshole yeah. it was all good uh, up until was... animus showed up but anyway episode opens up in school and we with see, Ellen. yeah, with Ellen sitting in the far left way before she got her own TV show. Ellen, when she was just shit and not successful and shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and not a criminal. <laughs> uh, I, okay, and in, in, instantly with this episode, we have our first point in favor of this episode. Mrs. Appleby's back. <laughs> yeah, Mrs. Appleby's back. It's been a while, though. It's been a long The last while. time she was around was the Tickle Sneezer episode. What? Yeah. Fuck is that? And she also didn't just return by herself. She also brought her incredible facials. And Bulk and Skull walk in, which I can best describe as early Twitch days. Bulk, the world's greatest guy. I have always enjoyed this notable class. Before Twitch. Yeah, this is like this is like when Twitch streamers go and walk around the rock walk around the town while live streaming. But in the nineties. I actually put here it reminded me of Scream 4 nerds. Let me just say to our guest, Sydney Prescott, it's an honor. Oh yeah. Yeah, it is really like that the, those guys. Wait, Scream 4? Oh, I blocked that out of my memory. Scream Okay, no. Bad Scream Andreas. Was good, dude. Bad. Scream 4 was good. I, yeah. I, I, okay, TV I got... show is what you need to block from your memory. There's a TV show? And... You don't want to know okay, about Okay, good. It, You're not me. aware of it. Good That's God. the right answer. You don't want to know. You don't want to know. You don't want to know. It was on MTV. Uh, the Balkan Skull is doing his Twitch thing where he goes like, Ah, I'm a good student. You know, that's some bullshit. Mrs. Appleby is a really great teacher. And Mrs. <laughs> Appleby getting pissed off and going like, Sit your ass down. Sit your $5 ass down before I make a change, Bulk. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I thought you'd appreciate also, the new Dak City reference, Andres. Oh, it's been a while since I've seen that movie. Also, I love how the... Because he's recording it for a video project. It's a little video is called bulk the greatest guy around so they sit on down and trini goes up to show her project uh it's time
time for some Captain Planet message. Coach, I've got AIDS. It's like you're expecting the clip of the Native American crying to show up. <laughs> oh, okay. Get him out of here! He's got AIDS! We still have a problem with- Oh, you're like the slow zoom in on like the Native guy crying. One single tear, no blubbering mess, no like Andrew Garfield mourning over his girlfriend in the second Spider-Man movie. So Trini shows the tape of just the wildlife running away from pollution and it's like a, like half a minute? Not even that long? Yeah, and, and it's already too much. <laughs> and also, it's way worse than the Steven Seagal out for justice pollution rant at the end of his movie where you just would not shut the hell up. You don't know about them because if they were to come into use... This is why I'm glad I've seen no Steven Seagal movies. Um, I don't know what that is either, so don't worry about it. Yeah. You're the only one. Yeah, I've watched that movie recently. I go like, oh my god, stop, stop. <laughs> I, I usually like to uh, think about that as like, is it pretentious on a scale of more or less than an inconvenient truth? And I'm like, the only ones that are like more concerned about this are, of course, the main four and plus Trini. You're a victim. Oh, mm. Like, I mean, the main five. <laughs> the main yeah. four and Trini. <laughs> sorry, I meant the main five. Right. Sorry. Like, what a dick. What an asshole. <laughs> uh, so Miss Applebee goes like, that's a great tape, uh, Trini. So what are your plans on doing for the environment? I was like, I want to start a cleanup club. And the rest of the ranger goes like, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do that. Yeah, because we're so fucking goody good in this show. To the point that it's getting really annoying. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. yeah. Like, like, you're supposed to be five kids with attitude. Yeah, what happened like, to the attitude? I will say this is the one thing where the movie got it right. Which one? The 2015-2016 one. Oh. All oh, right, they did. They really did. All right, that was the Michael Bay version of Power Rangers, in my opinion. But at least they're actually teenagers with some fucking attitude. We cut back to Bandor Castle, and we see Scorpion again. And I don't think she does anything in this episode either. No, I, th I think she has a few fights, but I want to say that's it. She's there at some point. Scorpion. She's a friend. She's a yeah. friend. She's a friend. Rita says, like, I'm going to send down Polluticorn. Oh, my God, this goddamn name. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. It's a unicorn, I'm, I'm... but evil, and he wants to pollute the entire earth. He wants to turn the earth into Cleveland. Evil. So we come back <laughs> to the youth center, and they're doing a recycling drive, and they're crushing cans, and one of the cans is lemon lime soda, the most generic brand you've ever seen. Like the most vanilla brand this would be like no name or kirkland brand soda yeah, you just know this is like some cheap ass president's choice fucking dollar store soda we not did. even dollar store it's dollar tree soda what would be the american is there a president's choice in america what would be american <laughs> dollar rama i'm trying to think of what that would be in like well wait okay so they have walmart in america so i guess president's choice exists there anyone who's in america let us know if you have a president's choice over there yeah uh, let us know about your bootleg sodas in the comments section below <laughs> so we see kim giving directions to ernie like to move the recycling bin to the it to the left and then she said to the right back to the left perfect it was in the same spot as it Take was it before back now yo <laughs> <laughs> it was in the exact same spot it was before kim what the hell? The mutricator goes off, and they, of course they run off. We see Bulk and Skull enter, and Bulk is wearing, what did you call it, Adam? The shell track suit from, like, uh, the Chuckle Brothers. Work it out. This is where I train. <laughs> I put Olivia from Smosh. Yeah, that, that also works. I'm stuff. the only one of this group that watches uh, the Smosh Pit stuff, so it's not good if you don't get the reference. Okay. We do not care. Skull is feeling a little bit sad because he goes like, Hey, Bulk, I want to be in this. You promised me I could be in this video. Bulk goes, fine. Hey, Ernie, can you record us working out? Ernie goes like, you guys working out? This I got to see. Uh, the Rangers didn't get called to command center. They just went off to the park in the most garbage-filled, land-filled park I've ever seen. What the hell? No. Yeah, it's like, did a garbage truck just decided to just go Bucket and no, no, I got it. A garbage man went postal in Angel Grove. That's what happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Billy takes out a beaker out of his pocket because why not? And says what like... <laughs> Really? <laughs> He's gonna sample the soil. Yeah, because he wants to know how polluted it is, and he was like, yeah, definitely polluted. No pH, just <laughs> polluted or no. So it's just clear. Yeah. Or not. It's all green, so it's polluted. So they decide to clean up, and while they're cleaning up, it's the most 90s goddamn montage I've ever seen. 
it's not even a good montage. It's just them throwing shit into trash and then piling up the bag. It's just no. Dude, like I put in my notes, this filler is fucking atrocious. <laughs> I agree. It's even more cringe when they're doing acrobatics and flipping over the garbage cans to uh, put the garbage in like it's like NBA Jam. He's on fire! But they yeah. can't burn the trash though. That's why it can't be on fire. Yeah. Exactly. You're on fire. Yeah, you're pretty cool too. No, you're literally on fire. Ah! <laughs> Zach is doing some hip hop dancing while picking up trash. God damn it, Zach. At least Zach is trying to make some fun out of it. Yeah. Yeah, at least he's trying to have a good time out of cleaning. You know what? I, I do got to mention this. I legit today was uh, going for a walk, taking a look at the litter, and I think this episode inspired me. Your walk brain. past it. The walk past it and not do a damn thing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so then they're done cleaning up. So Billy takes out his beaker again and goes like, hey, let's see if this is polluted or not. And it doesn't turn green. He takes, a, he takes out his beaker. The beaker goes, me, 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 me. <laughs> He goes like, it's all clean now. And Kim comes up with the dumbest 90s lingo that they tried to get over back then. Funky down the drain, dude. What? In the <laughs> absolute fuck? fuck? Done? No, 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 no. No, 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 Kimberly yeah. fucking kid. <laughs> Caitlin. I'm not so mad that I just named her Caitlin. <laughs> Have you ever been so angry you forget the other person's name that you're angry at? Yes, <laughs> yes, uh, Mitchell. Mitchell. God damn it, Phyllis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the gang says, like, oh, we did a good job. Let's go do the other side of the park right now. I was like, yeah, let's go. So they walk off. Bulk and skull Skulls. pop out of the trash. <laughs> and I'm wondering, where the hell did you come from, Bulk? Jesus. We live here. <laughs> we live here. <laughs> <laughs> this is our trash palace. This is like the scene from the labyrinth. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. I live here. Uh, Bulk tells Skull a videotape me showing me that I picked all this garbage. And Skull starts recording yeah. and Bulk goes like, I'm the one who picked all this garbage. And Skull tells him like, Hey, come back to the right, come back to the front, come back to the back. And the banana that he threw earlier, he slips on it like a cartoon and falls backwards into the trash. Oh, trying to convince Bulk to come back to the right. <laughs> <laughs> right wing skull. <laughs> what I love is that means Bulk isn't right wing. <laughs> Uh, so Skull is puts down the camera and tries to pick up Bulk, and then we cut Come to on, the Bulk. Get up, get it. We gotta make America great again. God. Oh my God. Come on, we're, we're missing the burnt riot. I mean rally. <laughs> we need to join people on January sixth. Gotta storm the White House. <laughs> I don't know you. Who is this? Don't come here. I'm hanging up the phone. Prank caller. Prank caller. Bulk skull. We Where were you, Bulk. January sixth? We he's... apologize to all our American viewers. <laughs> I'm going to hell. No, we all are. We cut to the gang still cleaning the park, and they're saying like, "How can anyone do this? Oh my God! Shut up! You need to shut the fuck up!" Billy looks up and goes like, "Putties!" And then no, <laughs> no. <laughs> So they start finding the puppies, and this the, the puppies, the puppies, the puppies. So this is the Power Rangers episode where they cross over with the pound puppies. Twenty years before they exist, <laughs> actually they existed in the nineties. Oh God, you're right. Sorry, I was thinking of Paw Patrol. So they start fighting the puppies, and this is the first time we see Billy actually level up. Finally, he doing... finally fights. <laughs> He's finally doing something. Instead of just standing off to the side with yeah. the putties. This... Second thing that is in this episode's favor is Billy fighting. Yeah. There are three things that I like about this episode. This was number two. Yeah, the most thing I was excited about this episode was to see Billy finally do actual godlike martial arts move. Because I've been waiting for this episode. Because Billy is just a beast when it comes to this. So is this like the turning point for Billy in fight scenes? Yes. Because he starts doing more fight scenes from now on. Thank 
god he's pretty because, sick yeah yeah because I, I really was sick of just like the either dodging or even just like one punch and then just completely edit him out until he's a ranger so they're fighting the putties and they're doing a great job kicking their asses and especially billy as well and then at the end of it they all do their magnificent pose of the nine minute and 23 mark and then the polluticorn monster <laughs> shows up flying and they morph <laughs> Obviously, it's Japan footage because, like, they go from the park to somewhere in the grassy knoll or JFK airport. Fucking grassy knoll. Mm. No, the gra <laughs> Okay. I thought we went over this already. The grassy, the grassy knoll, knoll is where JFK got shot. I know. Not the JFK airport. I said, or the JFK airport because it, it looks like an airport. Oh, uh, okay. I, that, actually, not... no, it does. You know what? Well, when you put it like that, you're actually, no, you're, you do got to kind of look like an airfield. I'll give it that. The older and Scorpina show up. I, oh, yeah. Scorpina actually does do something, but only for a few seconds. But, you know, it's something. For some reason, Zordon teleports them back to command center saying, like, the only way to destroy this monster is to chop off his horn. Could have said that when they were in the mid fight. Come on, Zordon. But then Jason would be like, oh, I get it. I have to, I have to cut his dick off. <laughs> Oh, I forgot to say, like, before the cutting of the horn, they go like, oh, Alpha 5 is printing the results right now, and then the whole printer paper is the old school 90s printer paper where they used back then, and I go, oh my god, I totally forgot about that. And it just wraps around <laughs> like Alpha. Like the 3D dot matrix. Right. You, know, you need all this paper to let you know you just need to cut off the horn. The hooks on the, the, like, the holes on the side that the hooks feed the paper through. Okay, so, for God's sakes, Alpha, what does the computer say for us to do? So it says... What would a computer do with a lifetime supply of chocolate? Chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> also, this is an like, uh, episode about saving the environment and saving the world. Like, wasting a lot of paper on this printer paper there, Alpha. Come on. I think that's the joke. So they morph again, fight Goldar, Pulitacorn, and Scorpina. Scorpina, you know, again. Relatively boring design, I will say, for the monster of the week this time. Uh, you could have done a lot more with a Pegasus slash unicorn. Mm -hmm. But the the face, though, is pretty cool. Like, he looks like an evil son of a bitch, is what I'm saying. I mean, in Q-Ranger, they made a unicorn a whole ass chest plate slash battleizer. It's just, and it was just a whole lot of nothing with this design, in my opinion. It's just dull. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. mid. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think they could have just done a bit more with it, is all. Yep, exactly. Jason is fighting him one on one to pollute corn. He's get taken down. He goes, like, I'm going to call upon the dragon shield. He calls upon it, does the dragon and sword combo. Okay, I heard does the dragon, and I was like, oh, God. <laughs> uh, the dragon, dragon balls. Dragon, dragon coxie. <laughs> dragon balls in my mouth. Bad dragon ballsy. <laughs> bad, bad dragon balls. Oh, I'm. I'm just sitting here shaking my head. Man, this episode has really gone off the rails. <laughs> so Pluticorn goes down. Rita uses her uh, magic wand, make her monster grow. And it grows. They call upon the Megazord. Two the Megazord. sword sequence. And why did I write yeah. down fart power here? What happened? The unicorn uh, has like wings. It's like pushing wind towards them. And we were making a joke of how it's just vile ass farts because it's the Pluticorn. Farts are towards the general direction of the rangers. And yeah, the... fart. <laughs> in your general direction. Yeah. Megazord calls upon the power sword and immediately does a jump and does a sword yeah. finisher combination. Pretty awesome. Like the most agile zord we've seen. Bluticorn goes down, he's done. We come back to Rita's moon base and she goes like, oh, fuck me, I have a headache. This so, is the first I have a headache in like 10 episodes. Exactly. It, it's at the point now where I just, I, I lost count even which one this is. Yes, you did. Hold on, I'm going to scroll back and see what the if, where the last headache was. So we cut to the juice bar and Carl Sagan on the TV saying like, oh, the Rangers did a good job. You wouldn't be here without the Power Rangers. Thank you, Power Rangers, whoever you are. So Ernie comes along and says, like, hey, yo, guys, we still got to do this dumb recycling thing. And Ranger goes like, all right, let's go. But let's finish this. These Pepsi bottles and bottles of soda is stacked on top of each other. Gee, I wonder what's going to happen with those. I hate to interrupt, but I have the headache. Uh, right. The last headache was in episode 26, Gung Ho. That long ago. Oh. And that, yeah. Wow. And that was headache number 12. So this is headache number 13. Okay. Wow, lucky number 13. 13 <laughs> Cancels out the 37. Not gonna do it. So Q, Balkan, Balkan Skull, Skull coming in, up. he's like rolling a tire and continuing his Twitch stream saying, Hey, I'm helping the environment. And then he trips and falls into the newspapers, the soda bottle, the pop cans. Not the pop cans yet. It's just the soda bottle in the newspaper. Somewhere along the line, he falls into the 
Pop cans. Yeah, like he gets up. Skull is like still filming this. And then <laughs> Bulk tries to like, I think it's he tries to like lunge at Skull. And then he either slips or he just goes right through the can. Bulk was saying like, oh, I'm going to get you Skull. And Skull goes like, hey, you're on camera still. Picks up a can and goes like, everything should be recycled. <laughs> and just falls down again. We cut back to the class. We forgot that Mrs. Alby still has some kind of purpose here. And that purpose is to give us the third and final thing I like about this episode, Bulk's video project. Mrs. Appleby is saying, Bulk, where is your project? He's like, Bulk, oh, Skull will be here. He's just editing it. And Skull runs in like, just finished editing it. Pulls out a VHS. If you don't know what that is, Google it. I ain't explaining it. God, we've really gotten to that point, haven't we? Yes. Yeah. So he puts the tape inside the VCR again. Google it. And <laughs> Say yes to VHS. <laughs> yeah. And be kind and rewind. So they start the tape and immediately it's like a YouTube poop before YouTube poop. I have no... Take your seats now. Mrs. Appleby is a pinhead. <laughs> can't, can't. It's just a bunch of stuff put together. Skull is the worst editor ever. Jesus. And he's like, I thought I cut that bit out. My favorite bit is right at the very end of the video. Show him going through the cans, and then he picks up the can, and he says, I need to be recycled. I think I should be recycled. Also, there's another part where, like, they're in the juice bar practicing kendo stick fighting, and it's the most hilarious thing ever. <laughs> they were working out, and Ernie had the camera, and they, he was, like, only filming that top of, like, Bulk's head. Like, during the shot, Bulk working out, and then Skull swings over on a fucking punching bag doing punches. So the video ends with that atrocity and Bulk looks pissed. They go like, Skull, I wanna pound you, cameraman. Skull runes away, Bulk gets up and has the tire seat go with him and he, he takes it off and he just storms out. No Skull victim today, just Bulk just not taking Skull shit anymore. It's cause Skull took two victims the other day. He took Biff and uh, that other child. Little tiny Elvis. Little tiny bald blonde man. Paul. Yes. Paul. 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 It's probing time. <laughs> so next episode. Season one, episode 38, A Bad Reflection on You. Aired November 27th, 1993, and was written by Peggy Nichol and directed by Robert Hughes. And this was a interesting episode, at least. It was a good palate cleanser for the bullshit we just had to, like, deal with. So we open on Bandora Castle, which is an absolute rarity these days. Like, you never open on Bandora Castle anymore. Yeah, It's usually at while. Angel Grove. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah, you don't... on the school or the juice bar or something. But no, they opened on Bandora Castle this time. For the past couple episodes, they've been, like, running slowly but surely running out of stock footage. And you can yeah. start to tell because some shots are now starting to be reused. More than usual. Mo most of the stock footage they can reuse is in the Bandora scenes anyway, so I can see why they would start here. But we open on Bandora Castle, and there's just a huge crowd of putties and her elites, and the monster of the week is also there. Uh, and she talks about how her plan is devilishly brilliant this time, how she's going to use the twin man, who is the monster of the week, to turn some putties into exact clones of the main five and have them commit chaos. And this is the first time we get evil ranger clones clones for sure evil rangers has happened before in power ranger punks so well not fully morphed i'm talking about fully morphed power rangers oh this is like completely like i'm, I'm not gonna say rangers because it does turn out their putties later on in the yeah. episode but I, i'd say this is the first interpretation uh, like evil power version rangers. of the five yeah the first like really evil of all five because it, in power ranger punks it was just billy and kimberly of course there was green with evil where that was mind control it wasn't like he chose to yeah. but i'm talking about yeah. a full team of five is what i'm saying but uh, i think we might get that a few episodes or a few seasons down the line i had to bring this up because i was looking at robert hughes to see if there was anything else he was in and i just got to bring this up um i don't know if this is the same person but there's this guy named robert c hughes and he directed this comedy indie film called zadar how from hell uh I don't know what that is. What? Zadar, cow from hell. A cow from hell A movie? A cow from hell. Why? And you said it was a comedy. Because there's a Robert Hughes and a Robert C. Hughes. They're probably two different uh, people. Okay, that was Robert C. Hughes. He doesn't have the Power Rangers stuff linked to him then. Yeah. Also, we see Scorpina I... staring right at the camera and Putty's doing some kind of hand motion. They were doing the Scott Hall ooh hand motion. Yeah. Which led me to add PWO to my notes. Putty World Order, but I looked at it and I'm like, why the fuck is the Pussy World Order here? <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh my. That was that bit. The twin man uses shadow clone jutsu, uh, sends uh, clones of the of the good guys to Earth. <laughs> They're all wearing sunglasses. And also, let it's me just me. say, David Yost, this is the first time we see him actually show his body in good lord. I was going to get to this, but like, holy shit, David Yost is jacked. He so is. He's like the most jacked of all of them. Because he's been hiding his body every episode and up until now. He's got like only overalls on this time where yeah. it's just like there's no shirt underneath it. So this is the first time you get a real look at his arms and chest and I'm like, holy shit. My God, if I had the chance. Like I'm saying, man, I would go gay for Billy because holy shit. Same, dude. <laughs> David Yost is the goat and I would absolutely have fallen in love with him as a kid. It's kind of hard not not to notice that Billy went from this scrawny little kid in the beginning to buff from <laughs> buff. <laughs> What I want to ask is, was that always there, just cleverly hidden to maintain the scrawny kid? First season I wore big clothes, I wore overalls and big shirts, and so it was sort of hidden. I did exercise more as I got on the show, so I, I, didn't, I wouldn't say I was buff, I was still kind of scrawny. Um, although, I don't know if I have a picture, but there is a picture where I have bigger arms than Jason did in Frank. <laughs> the first season, brawls, the structure, the all big, very interesting attire. But yeah, it was somewhat muscular. Everybody, whenever they mention Billy's body, is like, Jesus Christ, David Yost. David Yost? More like David Yoked. Exactly. Bum, bum, bum. But yeah, we're giving a lot of love to David Yost's body, because, like, you know, Jason David Frank, Austin St. John, Walter Jones have great physiques, but fuck! David Yost! <laughs> Yeah, this is the first time we really see it. Anyways, enough of that. <laughs> enough of that. Yeah, they're all in sunglasses, and Jason says in a really cool voice that clearly is not his own, even though he like he's, he's trying to act like he's not himself. He says, we have our orders. And then he slowly lowers the sunglasses, and the eyes flash red, just like Tommy's did green. <laughs> right. I think they all glow red, don't they? Is there evil? No, no, no. Only no, Jason it's does just it. Tommy, I think. Or Jason. Yeah, only, Jason. Only Jason does it. And they all walk to the, to the school. And immediately, I'm like, I fucking love this concept. Normally, I'm not a huge fan of, like, framed slash, you know, I've been framed or betrayed plots. Uh, oh, small yeah, side, yeah. Small sidebar. Like, earlier today, uh, shout outs to Damien again, by the way. Earlier today, I was playing Final Fantasy 14, and we got to a point where, mild spoilers, uh, you're framed for the assassination of a royal royal member like a member of royalty and like everything goes wrong and the entire time through this like 30 minute cutscene i'm like oh my god i don't care shut the fuck up <laughs> i was so mad when it's presented like this where you actually see the evil side and like see things and it's not just like blindsiding you it feels like it's more fair <laughs> yeah anyway they're they're in the school now they're all walking down the hallway like they're the terminator got a lot of bitches to plow so you can fuck them in Later, but you should fuck him in yeah. Especially oh, with Jason when you do that stupid voice. Come with me if you want to live. Also, can I just say, Evil Trini and Evil Kim are fine as hell. Whatever, cancel I... humanoid, whatever. We talked about Billy You Barbie. were a kid when you were watching it. Yeah. yeah, I'll allow it. They're like 40 now. I think we're allowed to yeah. say it. Yes, they were like 22 at the time, 19, 20. David Yost was the oldest at 24. They're in the school now. Jason points at a water fountain and... Everyone pulls out a crowbar, start going to town on this uh, on this water fountain. Bulk and Skull show up in the hallway, and they're watching, incredulous, and they slowly start to approach. Kimberly's the only one that isn't really working on the fountain, and she's, like, doing her nails or something. Skull walks up to her and she's like, Want to catch the submarine races tonight? <laughs> what in the hell is a submarine race? And how does that go? They go like so you're slow. Watching a, you're watching the top of the water, or is there, like, a screen? Like, what? Like, Are you watching two submarines races, or are you just throwing a sandwich down a hill? It's gotta be the slowest race ever. It could be two sandwiches rolling down a hill like the cheese wheel. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Kimberly says, Sure, sweet lips. You call. Then she does anal. Skull yes. is just confused. They finally get the top of this water fountain off, and then the 40 year old virgin shows up. Hi, Billy. I say it's 40 year old Bill Gates before he became mega rich. Billy goes like, hey, mm -hmm. I'm gonna take care of this fucker. <laughs> and then he says the most ridiculous line I've ever heard. Pasta la pizza, baby. Well, have you thought about, I don't know, 
not doing that. Fuck. I, uh, is it weird that he was more threatening in the other? No, actually, it makes more sense that he was more threatening in the other episode. He was more yeah. hammy in the other episode where he was a punk. He was like, yeah, this one, he's just low key. Wait, and, and then says the worst thing humankind has ever said. Yeah. Wait. I, I got it. Uh, because these are putties, this is what they've observed Billy to be like. So when he's an actual dick, like in Power Ranger Punks, he's actually terrifying. Uh, exactly. It's still the worst line ever. So yeah, he says pasta la pizza, and I'm like, okay, shut the fuck up, David. God damn it. Uh, he sends the other guy running, and then, now that they've finally gotten the water fountain disassembled, they start pouring what I thought was rat poison <laughs> into, the, into the water supply it turns out they just came from japan and they have a, a box of mis mr sparkle sparkle fuck yeah sparkle 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 <laughs> yeah no it's just laundry detergent put the water fountain back together and go like semi hide and who comes around a few minutes later but principal kaplan and he turns on the water fountain <laughs> and he gets a big fad bukkake in his face and it just keeps going it does and going stop. just keeps going and it's just a giant pile of suds in the middle of the hallway he slips and falls on his ass and still falls going back. it's like the energizer bunny it keeps going and then he falls back and then the bell rings and all the students come out into the hallway and see him flopping around like a fish with his two payoff in all this sud while the five evil rangers are just standing there watching you notice that the rangers are like like they don't have blood because they're very very pale white <laughs> they're definitely light in the face but then they cut to commercial they cut back and he's still flopping around like a fish they're still laughing laughing at him and then mr kaplan finally sees who it is and then he goes detention detention probably the best detention line he says ever detention <laughs> and then they leave and then the goodies come by and they're not wearing the sunglasses anymore but mr kaplan doesn't see sunglasses difference so once they go to help mr kaplan up he's like you five in detention now still wearing the same clothes as the evil putties no, yeah the putties would have known it, what they wore that day it, it's obvious squat watched them because squat likes to watch yes <laughs> yes he does i'd like to watch so we cut to detention and the five goody goods are there and also bulk and skull because of course bulk and skull are in detention <laughs> mr kaplan says that water fountain prank was the pinnacle of degeneracy in my school you haven't seen much at all have you mr kaplan <laughs> he starts to explain how detention works and despite to avoid him stating the obvious bulk says i have a meeting to attend go to your meeting I know the routine. I'll fill him in on the rest. And then Kaplan just leaves. As soon as he leaves, Bulk and Skull are like, oh, thank God, I thought he'd never leave. Bulk immediately gets up, walks to where Jason is sitting, and he says, oh, I think you're sitting in my spot. Jason says, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Do you, uh, is it written here on the, on the table? And <laughs> Bulk says, actually, it is. And then he pulls away Jason's bag, and it, it's just B-U-U-L-K. Adam. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to get mad at you for the Jason voice, but oh, but I forgot about Bulk. Yeah. Bulk. Majin Bulk. And I'm like, of course he's big, fat, and pink. This is what it is. It's the cover. Dragon Ball Z. Majin Bulk! Bulk. Okay, ah! Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z is now canon in, in Power Rangers just because he's Majin Buu. This is what he did after uh, Buu Saga. And he, eats, he fucking eats like Buu too. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get there. Before that, so... we get Skull going up to creeping on Kim saying, hey, when are we going to go on that date? Kim goes like, get real, eel. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. Poor Skull. Oh my god. Yeah, poor, poor Skull again fucking getting fucked by Kimberly. Wait, At this point, wait. they really need to like tell Bulk and Skull at this point because it's just doing more harm than good to their fucking mental health. No wonder Skull murders people on the daily. <laughs> so Bulk pulls out his lunchbox of holding and he says, oh boy, what did my mom pack me for detention today? He opens up the lunchbox and first is a napkin, which is just a picnic tablecloth that he uses for a bib. And then he pulls out, and I'm going to try my best with this. He pulls out burger or sandwich. I can't really tell what it is. Three donuts, three foot long hoagie pineapple another sandwich the loaf of bread 
whole bottle of ketchup, mustard, can of soda. This is when it gets really hard. I think it's another sandwich and he sniffs it just to make sure. Then it's like a, a sausage or something or a licorice stick. And this is where it's like really hard to tell. So it's just a bunch of like small items that are either sandwiches or fruit or other things. Then he finally pulls a banana. Taking this, all of this, this out is, of his uh, Mary Poppins lunch bag. The tin lunchbox that is like clearly a lunchbox of holding from D&D. &D. Yeah, the yeah. only thing to make this my lunch is to add a bottle of Frank's Red Hot Sauce. <laughs> that you carry in your backpack. <laughs> no, in my inner bat jacket breast pocket. No, you're right. I carry the big bottle in my bag. Why? <laughs> because he puts that shit on everything. Damn right. After, after that mountain of food, Bulk walks over and is like, please, sir, may I have a little bit of crumbs? Bulk eventually relents and gives him the can of soda. Gull's excited and walks over to his desk, sits down, is ready to enjoy this nice soda that is clearly warm because it's been sitting in the lunchbox dimension all day. He cracks open the soda and it's obviously Obviously shaking a bit so it sprays everywhere on himself the other goody goods laugh at skull and skull is pissed off so he decides oh i'm gonna get kimberly back for canceling our date Jeez. i'm gonna throw my soda at her <laughs> And then they just slowly like circle the desk like it's a bullfight. Kimberly dodges out of the way last second and all of the soda goes on bull. Bull gets really pissed. And that's the uh, secret final item that he had in his box of holding was a banana cream pie. He throws it at Skull and uh, Skull is like, he tastes it and he's like, aw, this is even better than what my mom makes. Thanks for sharing, Bulk. <laughs> oh my god, I love them. Yes, they're so great. They do have a little mini shot in Bandora Castle where Rita is talking about, oh, they got them locked up in detention. That's good. Now let's see what my my ranger clones really do. And now we cut to them as the rangers in the hidden borough of Angel Grove, uh, Japantown, where everyone looks Japanese. Angel Grove has, <laughs> sure has a lot of Japanese people in their downtown area. Yeah, in Japantown. So they, the, the rangers all jump down and obviously the Japanese people swarm them. Jason goes, <laughs> yeah, evil Jason Friend. goes, surprise, and they, start, and they start shooting into the crowd. <laughs> like this is no Russian. <laughs> Remember, no Russian. The rangers are now causing chaos and also they cut went from a bunch of japanese people running away from the rangers to a bunch of american people running away from the rangers and then back to a bunch of japanese people running away from the rangers i love when they do that we cut back to detention bulk says oh look it's time for my favorite cartoon and he pulls out a remote tv rig that's like just a literally a crt that he plugs into the wall and then like rabbit ears for the top i think just so he can get a good signal he sits down at a desk and he gets a cartoon going sorry hold on one second you forgot to say brings out a bag that labeled detention survival kit with all this junk in it i forgot about that the fucking bulks declassified detention survival kit and for some reason there's a hand on top of the tv why probably working as his rabbit ears maybe no no it's a it's just a one single hand it's not his head it's just like a disembodied hand or? it's a disembodied hand <laughs> is it like a rubber hand yes it's a rubber hand and it's one of Skull's well, victims. Then, just Willie tried to get out. Just <laughs> like Bulk has this look on his face. Like he sees the rubber hands. Like what the fuck is this doing here? And throws it away. And he fucking eats it. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. Thanks for reminding me. No, he finally got Uncle Howard. <laughs> no, not Uncle Howard. He was just about to get sent to the home anyway. Bulk sits down at a desk, and Sol Skull sits down right in front of him, and is uh, obviously blocking Bulk's view. Bulk shoves skull out of way and says get out of my view blockhead at this point billy says oh what a remarkable display of early neanderthal socio contact i love how he's just studying them at this point yeah like they're a wild animal for a national <laughs> geographic special yeah. your stupidity fascinates me I must examine Skull. further. Skull now sits behind Bulk, and they're watching this cartoon. <laughs> Malcolm, you said you tried to find this cartoon. I, yeah, no. This is the cartoon I tried to find. I tried yeah. to find it. For the life of me, I, I don't know if you guys tried as well, but I couldn't. I couldn't either. I couldn't find it. I was yeah. like, this is clearly some public access bullshit. Some show from a different country. As they're watching the cartoon, a uh, special report, breaking news comes in, and they're both like, aw. Special report. The Power Rangers are attacking downtown. The Power Rangers are evil now. And then the five uh, goody goods are like, Jason's like, wait a minute. We would, I mean, they wouldn't do that because now they're like, oh, we got to get out of here. Kimberly says, oh, look. Kaplan just took off. Now's our chance to sneak out. 
Kimberly tries to sneak out and they're like, okay, let's follow her. And Bulk's like, don't do it. Three, two, one. And right on cue, Mr. Kaplan brings Kimberly back. And stay in. But hold on. The cartoon Bulk and Skull watch on the mini TV before getting interrupted by the news bulletin of the Evil Rangers is the anime Hakushan Daimo, other, known as that? the Genie Family. How in the world did oh, you find it's that? an anime. It's like a 70s anime then. Thank you, probably Ranger. Got the probably got the license from Toei when they got the Zhu Ranger license. So, cue montage of clips from Genie Family. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I don't don't do that. I'm not going to get Don't do it. No, don't um, do it. I'm not going to get yeah, like, no. my Yeah, no. Holy cartoon. You're getting screwed if you use any clips from that. You have chosen wisely. After a bit more of the news report saying, oh, the casualties are growing and so is the chaos. Oh, and this is the point where our Lord and Savior. Linkara mentioned in one of his uh, Power Rangers of History recaps saying, where are the goddamn police and army? They're clearly dead. I honestly oh. think it's like Godzilla at this point. It's like they know they're useless, except for that one dude that will always drive a tank to shoot at Godzilla. Yeah. Exactly. Like, like there's always one asshole with a tank that's like, you know what? I'm gonna be the guy. I'm gonna yeah. do it. I'm gonna... Just dead. Another great input point of insight from the Lightbringer. Lamps. He hates it when people call him that so much. And he reviews lamps. But he loves it when they reference his reviews of lamps. And this is the point where the announcer on the school uh, intercom says, uh, due to the emergency happening outside, no one is allowed to leave school premises until it's cleared up. And this just puts the uh, Ranger boys and girls on a bit more of a time limit. So, Zach hatches a master plan. The most brilliant but most stupidest plan at the same time. I, I love this entire scene so much. Zach <laughs> walks up to Bulk and Skull and says, hey, can I show you guys a magic trick? And then he shoves <laughs> a pencil in Bulk's eye. It has the same oh, logic yeah. as that one scene from Happy Feet where Robin Williams' penguin needs to convince himself to fall off a cliff, so he goes, I to trick myself. Boy, look at that. What? Ah! <laughs> the, the way that the scream cut off, too, it's amazing. But what he actually does, he says, I can make all five of us disappear. So what you need to do is cover your eyes with these blindfolds and then... Bulk uses the picnic tablecloth, and then Skull uses his bandana as blindfolds. Then Trini says, oh, you guys need to put your fingers in your ears and count backwards from 10. And then begins and the IQ of, drop. No, none of this is sus at all to them. And then we get Bulk and Skull counting. So it goes 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 8, 7, 9, 7, 7. Nine, seven, <laughs> nine, eight, eight two, another Q, <laughs> and the Batman symbol. Smiley face. Mississippi. Bueller. Bueller. <laughs> It's amazing. And this entire time while they're trying to count down from 10, they just straight up like yell out their morphing sequence and they don't hear a fucking thing. It's amazing. They teleport away and are now at Japantown where the five Rangers are also there with Scorpina. They all do like the uh, the lineup against each other and Scorpina's there. The evil Rangers are like, oh, you can't defeat us. Jason's like, oh, yeah, you can't take down the real thing. And Scorpina's like, are you sure about that? Then we cut back to Bulk and Skull, still counting down from 10, and they're still stuck on Nine, uh, seven, and eight, 24. Seven. And Bulk's like, hey, don't forget to tell us when we can open them. Uh, God damn it, Bulk. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, wait, I already said eight. Damn it, I give up. And he pulls off the blindfold, and he's like, holy crap, they're gone. Skull, what did you do to them? Where did they go? And then Skull's like, I can't hear you. Then he just shoves the bandana down and Skull's like, hey, they're gone. And then Bulk's like, nothing gets past you. And they start looking for them. While we get to the the fight, this fight is amazing. Mm -hmm. I love this fight. Ranger Very fighting, well choreographed. Each ranger fighting his own ranger. Yeah, the imposters fighting the real one. We get a little fun bit with Trini and uh, Kimberly, where Kimberly is being accosted by her clone. And then Trini is like, oh, don't worry, Kimberly, I'll save you. And then shoves one of the Kimberly's off and then is guarding the other Kimberly. And the Kimberly is uh, behind her. She says, stay behind me, Kimberly, if you're hurt or if you need like help or something. And the Kimberly behind her says, don't 
make me laugh. Me and then he starts choking Trini. She chose poorly. <laughs> and then Kimberly's like, "Don't worry, Trini, I've got you." And then she shoots uh, her clone, who turns into a putty and then disappears. As the first putty goes away, we cut to a shot of Rita slowly looking up at the camera and going. Oh. Oh. Then they destroy oh. Trini's clone. And she goes, oh, God, no, not again. Uh oh, the <laughs> second most terrifying word in science. Uh -oh, right next yeah. to oops. Uh oh, is also one of the most terrifying Canadian children's game shows. <laughs> yeah, but enough about that, Wink Yahoo. But enough about that. We cut back to the detention and and uh, Skull is now become the killer that is in Dead by Daylight and is checking the cabinets for <laughs> the survivors. And that's fun. Uh, he checks the first one, nothing. The second one, nothing. And then the third one bumps into Bulk's head. <laughs> so we cut back to the fight and uh, the Black Ranger gets easily defeated. The clone, the, the Billy clone also gets defeated. Then we get to the main event, the Jason clone. And I just, his balls. I beg your pardon? He's hacking. Yeah, um, I, I feel like this specific putty was good friends with David Bowie from Labyrinth. It's not a putty, it's the monster, <laughs> like Twin Man. Twin Man is packing. Yes, yeah, so Twin Man apparently is packing, and I'm like, yeah. holy shit. Yes! He's clearly defeated, and then Twin Man reveals himself. And Twin Man, of course, is voiced by the Brian Cranston, everybody. He's back. Class. His second appearance in the show. And I think yeah, his first, last. His last, until the 2017. His last. Movie. Yeah, and then the first one was the Snizzard. Is this better or worse than um, than Snizzard? Yeah, he has less lines than the Snizzer. But I like Twin Man's concept more. Mm -hmm. I wish they could have chose a different name, but it's... I, I think, yeah, Snizzard's probably one of those monsters that just... It's just iconic, and this is just not as... Twin, Twin Man's the iconic one. Oh, sorry, not Twin Man. Uh, Snizzard's the iconic one. Twin Man's the cult classic. I don't think Twin Man is a cult classic because I completely forgot about him. I mean, I think I think he's really cool. I like the mirror gimmick. Yeah, and, it is cool. Yeah. I'm saying, but like when people like when Power Ranger fans talk about monsters, Twin Man doesn't come up with the conversation. It's more Snizzard. I suppose that's a fair point. So they are dead set on destroying Twin Man. So we get the first in a long time on ground finisher so first we get the five ranger blast does in the pyramid which was really cool and then we get the formation of the uh the power whatever blaster. whatever it's called the power blaster with uh the weapons coming together and i'm like oh my god i miss this i love this it's always great to see it come together it's yeah, been a minute um, yeah like i can't even remember the last time they did this because they always just used the swords uh but yeah they just they destroy uh the twin man <laughs> And they pose. Then, yeah, they pose, and a bunch of Japanese people run up towards them. And then we get the race change cut. We saw the whole thing. Where the camera cuts, and everyone's suddenly white, except for the one Asian guy in Steve's shirt from Blue's Clues on the left. Yeah, it looks really confused to be there. Race yeah. cut. Yeah, the race change cut. Yeah. And the white people are like, oh, well, we're so sorry that we framed you. We're so sorry that we thought you were evil. And then the news comes on. And it's like, oh, don't worry. The Power Rangers are good now. They destroyed the imposters. And now the world is a safer place. But the casualties and the chaos remains. And Al Borland <laughs> just walks up. Yeah, Al Borland. <laughs> Al Borland. I, I was going to say Red I was going to say Red Green from the Red Green show. Yeah, too. You know. There's a million different things that you can use with duct tape. And then we cut to Bandora Castle, and Bandora's pissed off. She shoves Goldar out of the way and then says, I have a headache again. So clearly they're just trying to make up for lost time, because this is now two episodes in a row with a headache. Indeed. You know, you stupid bitch, if you want to fix your headache, just use a little bit of duct tape. Or WD-40. <laughs> <laughs> or WB-40. Either or. So then we cut back to... Uh, detention bulk and skull have looked everywhere and can't find the five they say okay you know what let's just tell principal kaplan that they booked it and hopefully we can get out of some detention for this so they open the door look for principal kaplan and he's right there and he says they say principal kaplan they're not here the five goody goods are not here and <laughs> principal kaplan says all right but if you guys are lying to me you guys are going to be in detention until you're 50 which i have two points about first First of all, Skull immediately says, So what's another two years? Wait, they're 48? <laughs> no, they're in no. detention until they're 48. 
Well, no, that th- they said another two years when they're fifty. That means they're forty-eight. No, Skull doesn't know how to count. We established this. No, I I know, but if you think about it. <laughs> It yeah, makes sense of... why, one, they look like the oldest students. Two, yeah. they know the routine better than anyone. But Hulk literally said he's done this hundreds or thousands of times. 13 Moving ages. Moving on. 13 ages. Yeah. The second point I have about this bit, about the detention until you're 50. You know you legally can't keep them in detention after they turn 18, right? Speaking of that, there was a part in Turbo where uh, Hulk and Skull are no longer in school, and they're just in the school for some reason, and Mr. Catlin shows up like, I thought you graduated. Go to detention. But, 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 but. No buts about it. Wow. What a fucking scary boy. My Another thing about this scene, as as uh, Kaplan says that, and then Skull says, uh, No, I promise they're not here, Mr. Kaplan. Sc- Scum's honor. <laughs> I missed that part. They all walk in. What they didn't see was that the Rangers uh, showed back up and all sat back into desks and pretended like they were doing some homework or something. Kaplan walks in. They all say, good afternoon, Principal Kaplan, like they're in a cult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good afternoon, Mr. Kaplan. Bulk and Skull are like, wait, wait, wait. You guys literally weren't here just a second ago. What the hell happened? Zach's like, oh, it's magic, Bulk. Kim really says, yeah, with mirrors like this one. Bulk and Skull are horrified. The bell rings. And then Mr. Kaplan's like, well, I hope you five learned your lesson. And Jason barely holding back a laugh says, we sure did. I oh. would add here that uh, Skull adds Mr. Kaplan to his murder list, but honestly, I did my research. Uh, Mr. Kaplan stays with the show for a very just, long time. I just talked about him saying he showed up in Turbo. No, I mean even longer than that. Yeah, he's there until like at the end of Turbo because he's no, not-, not Turbo. I mean Lost Galaxy, like in space. He shows up in Lost Galaxy because the last time I see him as a principal is like. In Turbo. No, I, I think it's in space. I, I'm pretty sure it's in space or Turbo because I remember seeing a scene of uh, Principal Kaplan talking with Andros. Wrong! No, that never happened because I recently saw... It did, his... I'm telling Bro, you. I'm telling you, I just seen in space a couple weeks ago. He was never on that. The whole show? Yes, because I did a rewatch with a friend and we watched the whole season and Mr. Kaplan never showed up. But yes, they're, they're all like shocked as they leave and he, they're trying to ask, like, come on, come on, guys. You got to tell us how the hell you did that. I mean, Zach, please tell us. And Zach just pats Bulk's stomach a few times before leaving. Get alive. <laughs> and, then, and then they both slowly look at each other terrified and then they just shrug and that's the freeze frame they end on. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what else can you do? Well, I guess we're, we're committed for another two years, so... uh Let's come up with more murder plans. <laughs> Bulk. Ba, 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 ba. I did look it up. Uh, you are right, Andreas. He showed up four episodes in Turbo, two in Zio, and 22 in Mighty Morphin. Fair enough. I'll allow it. But, you know, it'll be cool to see Kaplan for the last time. So we have reached our conclusion. Uh, final thoughts? Um... This was a decent batch, like, of filler. Definitely really enjoyed, I want to say, the first and last episodes more than the middle. Yeah. But I, I will say, I think I'm looking forward to next week more than anything. Oh, yes. I, I feel like this was just yeah. uh, a seat warmer for then on. I'll, I'll go next. I've gone on record as saying a lot of these episodes have been really fun to watch. And pretty much everything except for... Uh, Except for Green with Eve, except for Green with Eve. No, I'm, I'm getting there. I haven't talked yeah. about this this blatch yet. I, and everything except for like Green with Evil is stuff that I would highly recommend you going back to watch. This is the first time there is an episode where I would say don't go back and watch it. <laughs> uh, and yeah, obviously that's uh, that's Birds of a Feather. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, no, no. Birds of a Feather was really good. Uh, but society like, is to blame. But Birds of a Feather is great. Bad Reflection on You is my favorite episode of The Batch. It had a lot to talk about, and it was a really fun concept. The cleanup Crew, like, there was stuff I liked about it, obviously. But you can just watch those clips because that all the pretentious environment bullshit, there's several shows that have done it way better. Like for personally, a favorite of mine was uh, Adventures in Wonderland had a really good environmentally charged episode because they didn't treat it like it was like deadly serious. They just 
taught a lesson Mm -hmm. and it was just it was just a normal episode of the show with an environmental lesson not like pretentious but if as long as you avoid uh cleanup crew honestly these other two episodes were really fun and you should go watch them i don't understand why cartoons just can't be like hey kids recycle pollution's bad that's the whole point of captain planet no, I, 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 fuck that show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fucking heart. <laughs> Wait, no, no, no. I can't say fuck. I can't say no. C- C- Captain Planet is a bad show. Otherwise, Don Cheadle will find me. Captain Planet, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, we don't yeah. want Don Cheadle to find me. Um, Captain, Captain Planet. I'm Captain Planet, motherfucker. <laughs> This is why I live near woodpeckers. So, yeah, true. His, his mortal enemy. So my thoughts on this. Birds of Fetter, I like the episode most because we get to see Jason to use the dragon shield against. Yeah. Other than that, it was an okay episode. Cleanup Club has just annoyed the shit out of me. The only thing I enjoyed was like Billy finally doing his martial arts god tier moves. Finally. A bad reflection on you. I enjoyed the most because like. Evil Power Rangers and so much good stuff going on here. Every scene in detention was very fun to watch. Yeah, with the random hand out of nowhere. <laughs> and the fucking lunchbox dimension right. and the stupid counting scene. <laughs> Next episode, we're going to get to uh, a two-parter, which is Doomsday in part one and two, which will be the last of the Doom Ranger footage and then after that officially read a seed of eatable episode will have the first ever do two footage do two footage incoming yes if you don't know what do two footage means we'll get to that when we get to that yes we'll get that to when we get to that until then i have been dead troop and i continue to love this show except for that one episode that will not be named from for for from now on <laughs> I am humanoid, and remember to uh, feed your kids. Yeah. <laughs> We're not eating. <laughs> I am the Doif. There once was a man from Nantucket. I say a a true. Bless you, ladies and gentlemen. I love you. May the power protect you.